What's up guys, JNO here, and welcome to Game Week 30 Review. Now usually, with everything that happened in Game Week 30, I'd be really happy, over the moon, bragging, you all know I like to brag, but I'm going to be honest with you guys, it's getting to that point now where I'm starting to get a little nervous. Stay tuned to see why. What's up guys, JNO here, and welcome to JNO United. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and remember, it's all about the game. Okay, so quickly before I begin, just want to quickly point out to those of you that only watch my FPL stuff, that on FM Scout I am doing an FM Scout tournament with a bunch of other YouTube creators for Prostate Cancer UK. I know Football Manager may not be all of your guys' thing, but please check it out, please donate if you can, it's for a great cause. It's a great, great tournament and I'm having a lot of fun being involved in it. But let's get on with the FPL. So game week 30 saw me get 68 points. I had a full team. The only person on the bench that played was Butland. And Butland and Forster pretty much both conceded. So it didn't really matter which one of those I picked. But fortunately for me, my defence came through for me. Hoof and Orderwield got clean sheets. Delhi Alley was a big player for me this game week, getting the assists for Harry Kane. Aguero was a big letdown, wish I'd picked Kane as captain. Jamie Vardy managed to get an assist, Leicester are still five points clear. And Arnautovic and Sigurdsson, both new players to the team, although I probably have had them at points during the season, they both came up big for me, getting me 68 points while the average was 35. I believe the average for the top 100,000 was around the 60 points mark as well, which means I was above average in the top 100k, which is always good. That has meant that my rank has increased up to 34,307. Considering there's 3.6 million players, I'm now in the top 1% of players in FPL, which is something I never imagined would be the case when I started this channel. I like to think I know what I'm talking about, but last year I was only in the top million so this is an incredible year for me. I have focused a lot on FPL this year compared to previous years, so maybe that's a big reason why. But a lot of it is down to you guys as well, putting your comments down below. Your comments are always appreciated. Some of the decisions you've made me make have actually done really well for me this season. So thank you guys so much as well. Part of the reason I'm this high up is because of you guys. So thanks a lot for that. And if we have a look at the results, the biggest upset for me personally was Man City going to Norwich and failing to pick up any points. Aguero, I was expecting big things from you and unfortunately you let me down. Man City are starting to fall out of the title race right now. and It looks like it could just be a two horse race at the moment. Both Spurs and Leicester managed to pick up three points and Bournemouth managed to beat Swansea but as I said, Sigerson still managed to get some points for me, which was great. As you can see, in the Classic Leagues, I'm now 20th in Kirchhoff's League, 11th in my own. And in the head-to-head -head leagues, it's the number one spot in both. And I have a big thanks to pay to get Sterling out for me being top of the table now. Because while I did beat Moonbeam, who gave me a good run for my money to be honest, and Deli Ali was the difference between our two teams, Get Sterling out, managed to beat Rob H26, which has given me the chance to be top of my own head-to-head -head league because I have more points in the season overall compared to him. So I'm finally top of my own head-to-head -head league, which feels fantastic. And the thing is, it was a close run thing. I only beat Moonbeam by eight points. Get Sterling out, only beat Rob H26 by six points. We were all in the 60 mark area and the top scorer for the game week was actually Allen's 11 with 73 points so next week as you can see I've got Hitless Wonders who are a decent side around the mid table and Rob H26 has Seal 11 and if we look at what they managed to do this week Seal 11 actually got 62 points which is the same as Rob H26 and Hitless Wonders managed to get 69 points which means this week they would have beaten me so I've got a hard fixture coming up next game week. If we have a look at my classic league we can see I'm 11th just outside of the top 10 and right underneath me Pad F has made a comeback. Pad United got 78 points this game week but the top point scorer was free at the back William C who managed to get 87 points and he is now top of the league knocking off Callum Sims who has been near the top for the whole season. Is Callum Sims going to lose it right at the death which would be a nightmare for him but it really looked like he was going to run away with this and now it's starting to get competitive 
Lifty B is at 15th. He's risen as well, just not as much as I have. So Lifty B is still around there chasing me. If we have a quick look at William C's team, he had Butlin and Goal, didn't really do anything this week, but he had Company, Simpson and Dyer all got clean sheets. Ali, Sigurdsson and Arnautovic all picked up points. Vardy and he Captain Kane, and I believe that was the difference this week, and I believe it could be the difference for everyone's seasons. Do you pick Vardy, Kane or Aguero as a captain? And now Lukaku with double game weeks galore coming up. Do you pick him as captain? If you make the right captain picks, it's going to make a massive, massive difference to your season. So that is the topic for the end of this video. Double game weeks are coming. There are still some blanks as well, which we have to navigate. So it's going to be a difficult couple of weeks left for the end of this season. And the wrong decisions in the wrong places are going to cost you. If Everton didn't have a blank coming up, I'll be saying get some Everton players in now because I don't have any Everton players and they have three double game weeks coming. They may even have a triple game week. So players like Lukaku, Barkley, going to be playing three times in a week. If they get on the score sheets, at least in two of those games, you're looking at big points. You then have the likes of Liverpool, Palace, West Ham and Manchester United, all with two double game weeks coming. But they also have blanks coming up as well. So we've got to keep an eye out because we have to manage to field 11 players every game week in an ideal world. So for me, the safe bet right now is Liverpool players, purely because Liverpool will have two double game weeks. They have no blanks coming up anymore. So they have the most fixtures without having to worry about putting players on the bench. So I'm looking at Firmino, Coutinho, Sturridge, if he stays fit. But I'll be honest, I'm not making any moves until I have to so I probably won't even have made the transfers by my preview video because I don't want to make a transfer and then regret it quickly for your guys benefit I'm going to run through the fixtures that are confirmed for game week 35 because there are some blanks in game week 35 we have Aston Villa versus Southampton Leicester versus Swansea Liverpool versus Newcastle Man City versus Stoke Tottenham versus West Bromwich Albion and Bournemouth versus Chelsea and also Sunderland versus Arsenal because Watford managed to beat them on the weekend just gone. And the games that are definitely off in game week 35, West Ham versus Manchester United and Crystal Palace versus Everton and Norwich versus Watford. So that's three games that will not be happening in game week 35. The one that really hurts for me there is West Ham and Everton. Those are the players I was looking at bringing in for the double game weeks. And now, unfortunately, they have more blanks. Anyway guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We're near the end of the FPL season. Let me know in the comments down below if you want me to do some sort of fantasy football related to Euro 2016. I've been JNO, you've been awesome, and remember, it's all about the game.